Hey, just wanted to do a recap of the sermon we had on Sunday. We had a great Sunday. want to thank everybody for coming out. We talked on Father's Day about how the Lord is calling us out. He's calling us into his service to make a difference for himself. So far in the book of Ephesians that we've learned that whatever you're into is what gets into you. And if you're not into Christ, you're going to be into sin. And if you're into sin, sin is going to separate you from God. It's going to draw you after other things rather than God. And what you want, your desires, are going to be betrayed. Because you're not going to get what you want. You're going to get emptiness. And because of that emptiness, we're going to fight to try to get the things that never bring peace. And all we do is fight. And all we do is war. Because we want, we can't have, and we war. It, it's an endless cycle. The cycle of sin, the operating of sin, is a system that's broken down, doesn't work. And hey, are we not seeing that today? The operation system of Christ, though, is totally different. Because... We open ourselves up to God's love, and then all of a sudden we figure out, hey, wow, this is what I've always wanted. I was looking for love. I was looking for love in all the wrong places. The place to find love is in love itself, and God is love. And so that as we begin to find ourselves responding to God's love, our desires change. And when our desires change, and enough of us, our desires change, community is rebuilt. What sin destroyed and tore apart and created war, Christ now is putting back together by refashioning our hearts, causing us to want different things and pulling us back together in peace. Our world needs peace. We've had enough of sin's operating system. And so we're going to take a look at chapter 4, how that Christ has now set us up for action. He's calling us into his service. So let's get into it. The peace community. What plans does God have for the church? Now always remember this. God seeks to bring glory to himself. The universe is really about Jesus. That's why everything needs to be brought underneath the submission of Christ. But in doing so, God loves to share, and he wants to put us on mission for himself. Not only does he want to save us, he wants to use us to bring about his glory for all eternity. So not only do we have the compliment of being able to be saved, we have the compliment of being able to be used by God to see others get saved. And so let's get to it. Let's take a look at this and see what God's program is. After Paul has gone through this great, uh, theology of one chapter three in the book of Ephesians, he exhorts us to walk in a manner worthy of the calling of which you've been called. And we need to know that we have a calling, we have a mission in life. And that mission is to be diligent to preserve the unity of the body, unity of the spirit, and the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is over all, through all, and in all. I, we have this calling to be in this community, this peace community, that is used, being used by God inside the world. This peace community is formed because of Christ's victory on our behalf. When he ascended on high, he led captive a host of captives and gave gifts to men. What does that mean? Except also that he descended into the lower parts of the earth. He died on the cross for our sins so that we might know Jesus and have eternal life. But he who descended is also himself, he who ascended far above all heavens so that he might feel all things. Christ's resurrection is the source of our hope and our resurrection, that we too. Now, here's the beautiful thing. Before Christ saved us, we were at war with him. We are his captive. He won us over by his love. We were on the wrong side. We were with the enemy, deceived by him into living out his lie. And now the truth has found us, and we have found ourselves free. And so we find ourselves captive to a captor who wants to give us everything. And that's love. You know, we were looking for love in all the wrong places, but when we find it in Christ, we find ex exactly what we've been looking for all along. 
And so he gives us spiritual gifts. He gives us this opportunity to be able to, to make a difference. And we all have different spiritual gifts, but they're all for the same purpose, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service. We've entered into the Lord's service. If you will have it, we have entered into the Lord's army to build up the body of Christ. How do we build up the body of Christ? Well, we, we see the church grow, not only in quality but in quantity our lives will affect others if we grow closer to jesus we have to attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of god to the mature man to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of christ why because god doesn't send children into battle we've got to grow up if, if we're going to see all things come under submission of god is what cha- the end of chapter one tells us in ephesians that that's the summation of god's whole purpose is to bring everything in submission under christ we have to if we're going to be used in that struggle we have to bring ourselves under the lordship of christ all parts nothing being nothing left out and when we do that we're going to attract people to jesus christ so as a result we are no longer to be children we're to grow up speaking the truth in love we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head even christ from whom the whole body being fitted and held together by whatever joint supplies according to the proper working of each individual part this is a part we have to we have to have one another's input to grow up preachers speaking the truth in love isn't enough all of us must why because we all bring a different dimension we all bring a different gift we all help the body grow causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love so what have we learned god wins us over as individuals to introduce us to a new community and in that new community we discover one another we get each other back the world separated us because love because sin separated us separated us from god separated us from each other and now god's love has brought us back into this community but not only that we work to get others back in other words we're on mission we've entered the lord's service here we know what it's like to have love restore us and our relationships it's time for us to get out there and see love restore other relationships as well and so as we grow the church will grow and then fourthly we grow by telling each other the truth and love now this isn't easy to do because most of us you know we don't want to speak a discouraging word we're from kansas i mean come on So how are we going to do this? How are we going to realize that speaking the truth in love is actually what's going to ensure our future? We just got to do it. We've got to figure it out. And so as we take these next steps, as we study this book, this is exactly what we're going to do. So I, I want to encourage you. God bless you. Let's move forward in this. The world needs us now. We're in the Lord's service. Now is time to make a difference for Jesus Christ. So God bless you.